Welcome to the Spa Girls Podcast, the podcast for self-publishing authors. You're here today with Trudy J, Wendy Valor, Cheryl Phipps, and Shah Barrett. Ever wondered if there were craft tips to help you sell more? Well, we're yes. here today to give you some. Yay. Yes, we are. They definitely are, right, they guys? Are. Totally, totally are. are. Yeah. yeah. All right. I, my first one that I love talking about is adding emotion. How do you yeah. Yeah, making sure that there is connection, emotion, like mm -hmm. we care about what's happening in the book. Mm -hmm. So yeah. what are some of the ways that you do that? Like, do we have any quick tips that we could give in regards to adding emotion? I think yeah. feeling like how somebody's making you feel without using the word feel, obviously. Yeah. 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 Because we want to show that. We want to show yeah. them that uh, somebody's been affected by something, somebody's done or um, what they've said to them, you know, yeah. like. Mm -hmm. The, the horror on their face or the, you know, mm. the sadness or, you know, happiness or joy or, you know, arousal. Dialogue is massive for um, emotion, adding yeah. emotion, you know, yeah. like, uh, I mean, a conversation between two people that is that are totally misunderstanding each other, mm. uh, worded right, I think, is, is gold because you, you know that he's not getting what she's getting and she's not getting what he said. Mm. Um, and if you've built in a little um, build up to that, mm. the fact they haven't seen each other or that there was a misunderstanding before that. And, you know, and, and that's huge. So there's that whole body language thing when mm. they're talking to each other. Um, that's massive. I think, um, yeah, for, I think for anything like that. I think the yeah. setup for me is a big part of it. Like Lisa yeah, Cron huge. talks about it, like the, yeah. you know, how you, you set up that misunderstanding like as a reader mm. you can kind of see these yep. two characters mm -hmm. kind of heading towards each other like two trains on a train track yeah and you kind mm -hmm. of know that it's coming and it's that expectation and that build up and that you know and then when it happens you kind of even and as you say if it was a situation where the dialogue was just misunderstanding as the reader yeah. they can see it happening and it's just like and you know that it, and he's got he's saying all these things that he doesn't actually mean but they're coming out because he's so worked up yeah. and bah, 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 and she's like well what you know and like yeah. coming back at him it's so easy to build that um conversation i think yeah. and that yeah. i think if you've got those it. characters set in yeah. your head yeah you, know, you can you can explore um how to amp it up can't you every yeah. time and you know i mean that that instant attraction or or not attraction when they're kind yeah. of repelled by each other. I mean, mm. that, you know, the, because the, the the perception of who that person is, you, you've you already ascertained that, you know. But mm. I think it's really important to get into that really quickly into the book. Yeah, like agreed. not necessarily setting the scene, you know, in a visual no. way of what the room looks like, but no. actually those two people and how they're going to come together and what, how does that look? Mm. Exactly. I think I think we, as new readers, I think sometimes they they tend to build a scene uh, mm. far too flowery with a lot of words mm. and a lot of mm. uh, you know. I don't think you need that. You know, like the book mm. I'm writing now. Um, he walks into his daughter's school because she's in trouble again, and he runs into someone and flattens her. And it's the woman he was he was in love with who who left him ten years ago. Who's a relieving teacher at the school. You know, like so instantly there's. He looks down at her and it's like, in his head, it's like, oh, you know, so you've built that emotion straight away because mm. on his, it's like shock and hers, it's shock. And, you know, like, you know, and then it all comes back. Why did it happen? Mm. Rah, rah, rah. So I think investing the reader straight away. Yeah. Is, I think that's is, crucial is to selling more books. Yeah. That's a real mm. craft technique is starting yeah. right in the middle of action or, yeah. or mm -hmm. some event. Don't, don't never start, you know, as we know a cliche but you know with them waking up after a dream or something like yeah. that unless yeah. unless literally the monster that they've just been dreaming about is lying in the bed beside them just they so. used to say okay. uh, and many, many they used to say um and she's gone there again um and they used to say um basically get rid of the first chapter and start up the second didn't they you know like because yeah. the first chapter is building yeah. and then bang we're there and that's yeah, where the first you chapter was always you explaining everything you wanted to explain yeah, yeah. which was yeah. not what you needed to do yeah. Yeah. exactly I yep. think another way of really engaging um, a craft technique as a reader, I think, is the really deep point of view, like really getting into mm. that, seeing it through the character's eyes, whether yep. it's third person point of view or first person point of view, it's yep. actually like really, really, really getting in there. Yeah. <laughs> that mm. real yeah. camera on the shoulder as it yeah. was explained to me, which really made it all made sense. Yeah. Make it mm. sense. And I think yeah. strong conflict, like having like, yeah. I read books sometimes and it's just like, 
oh no, I can't go out with that guy because <laughs> he's wearing the wrong jacket and I can't support people who wear denim jackets or something you know instead of there being like this really meaty kind of thing and mm. or sometimes it's just like actually they could just have a conversation and sort this out this is not a problem yeah you know mm. like but when you get a, a deep conf a conflict where it has to actually things have to happen mindset to has resolve. to change or something has mm. to you know like there's it's not there's misunderstandings there's all sorts of things that are yeah. leading to it yeah yeah, yeah. and that, that can be and if you show that right from the start that there yeah. is a you know, a, a mm. massive conflict. Like I always, I went to a, um, I think it was RWA, some conference one time, and it was, a person was talking about like, they had a character who, um, whose mother was an alcoholic um, and they'd, they'd struggled their whole life with the repercussions of that. Mm. And then she was kind of like, well, the obvious answer to that is that my love interest is going to be a recovering alcoholic. So, yeah. and it was, to yeah. my mind, that blew my mind. I was like, I can't, I can't even, even still, I don't know how yeah. to, reconcile mm. that but that was yeah. kind of the level that i'm talking about so much like this, emotion yeah, yeah. this and, and that person has to get over the fact that this <clears throat> you know this person is a recovering alcoholic because they've been yeah. through much so much pain because of it and and it's the same kinds of things when you're writing these books you need to have them be you know whatever flaw whatever issue or problem that your characters have it needs to be something that they're going to butt heads against with regard yeah. to that, that i think romance. you've got to be careful of also stereotyping characters is massive mm. yeah you know if you've got a baddie you don't have to make them a typical baddie uh, or or if you've got a a tough male lead and he's just like all macho and that they, you have to show something that we're going to empathize with him if you want to bring us on board for his journey. Mm -hmm. uh, and by that, I mean, he comes out of a, a meeting where he's been a real, I want to say a-hole, but I'm sure I'm not allowed, you know, but he, and he's walking along and, and he sees, you know, a moth drowning in a, in a puddle and he bends down, picks it up and puts it on a dry piece mm -hmm. of land. And instantly you're like, Okay, this guy, so, so bad. he's got that hard side mm. to him, but there's an actual fact, you know, like, or he's walking down the street and, he, and a soccer ball gets kicked his way, so he plays with the kid and kicks it back. Mm. There has to be redeeming features and, mm. and bringing the emotion into it and introducing us to what makes this person tick. Yeah. Um, mm. I think that's vital. And I've read enough books that haven't done that. And I'm just like, it sort of left me for dead, you know? Mm. I need to get invested very early within my yeah. characters. Yeah. I was yeah. watching it, even when you get a character that you don't like, like, you know, and typically in romance, <laughs> it's that kind of alpha male arsehole. Mm. Sorry, I said it. Um, yeah. I said but I was I even, it, yeah. I, I was watching a movie last night and the main character was this woman and she was an unlikable main character. Yeah. And normally, yeah. I don't like that, but because yeah. they set her up right and they, mm. you kind of could see why she was like that and why mm. she was yeah. behaving badly. And, it, and she sort of gets her redemption at the end and kind of comes mm. around and realize, you know, like because mm. you can see it happening and understand it, you're more forgiving for the bad mm. traits and you're more mm. understanding. You go, oh, actually, I get why she's like that. And she's, she's, you know, mm. oh, oops, there she goes again, being a bit of a <coughs> horrible person, but I get it. And that's what you want. You don't just want them having them being complete mm. horrible people with no explanation and no background and no nothing like that's going to confuse people also setting them up right from the beginning like a meat cute where mm. where there's just this overpowering mm. if it's not desire this like wow this guy's really amazing and she's beautiful and you know oh their conversation is great and oh she's an astronaut and he's a whatever and whatever <laughs> they, 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 they well yeah. they, they find out these things and they're like really really compelled to to be with each other or pursue a relationship and then they find out one of them or both of them have done something really awful, or both there's something in their killers. past that is mm. against everything, like you say with the alcoholic, you know, um, mm. so against everything that they feel they want in a person, mm. and yet, and yet the attraction doesn't go there's away. So, yeah, yeah, there's so much right. Yes, but everything is wrong, you know. Yeah. Like, now that's yeah. your typical friends to lovers thing, and I cannot yeah. handle those. I need enemies I love to those. lovers, so they yeah. need to hate each other from the beginning. But there's yeah. this kind of little magical mm. chemistry, but they still yeah. hate each other, and then they have to. I like them friends to lovers, lovers, which gets too. us mm. on to tropes, universal fantasies, yeah. and yeah. what's been described butter. as butter. So mm. tropes is kind of the story element. So it'd be like just exactly that: friends to lovers, mm -hmm. enemies to lovers. It's it's sort of the the hook if you like that all of us as readers recognize and it's it's a shorthand of saying what the yeah. element of the story elements because there's usually more than one and should be ideally in a book um and the universal fantasies is kind of like 
um, this is Theodora Taylor's work, which we'll put a link to here, but um, it's, I would describe it as it's the why people like that trope kind of thing. The emotion um, is how I always think of it. Like the yeah, trope is kind of a descriptor kind of, the, of a scenario. Yeah, it's, it's, the, the, it's the, the yearning or the satisfaction that they get from, from that. You know, so the feeling that it's they a Cinderella get story, it. what is it about the Cinderella story, which is the universal fantasy of, mm. you know, being <laughs> taken away from your drudgery and, mm. you know, the handsome prince, blah, 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 blah. Um, and then the butter, well, she describes butter as kind of the, the, the way you... Um, it's like having a roast chicken and putting butter on it. The butter just makes it better. <laughs> it's the little right. <laughs> that yeah. touch. I don't like, yeah, this is not my work. So I am probably absolutely bastardizing the explanation of that. But but I, fundamentally, it's about understanding what readers are looking for from your particular story or for, from that particular enemies to love a story. Mm. It's it's why they like the story. Yeah. And it's what really gives them the feels. That. Yeah. yeah, because and it's we all can all about the feels. We, we and can it's all often write them. universal. Yeah, right. Mm. Sorry, that's right. No, go. I'm just saying we can all write the books, mm -hmm. but it's it's writing them with the emotion. That's the tough yeah. thing. Yeah, I mean, you don't want bland characters. You don't want a baddie and a goodie no. and a no. small town girl and a billionaire tycoon no. that you don't love. Okay. No. You but know? often, yeah. often if you're writing a particular type of character, for example. Um, a, a royal for example a prince mm. then the expectation from readers there will be something royal-esque in that story whether mm. it's a, a ball or a mm. coronation or something in a castle like so mm. you can turn it on its head he can be a prince in the middle of the Australian outback but there's still there if you picking up a book with the prince in the title there's something princely that happens <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, the prince is always maybe is part of the story in itself, right? Like, so you mm -hmm. can't have a prince who's not, you know, yeah. you think about it as immediately you say prince, there's going to be, if he's in the outback, he's a prince who's running away from his title and his expectations exactly. and yeah. he's mm -hmm. hiding out. And, and he's an he's under maybe... cover prince. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sheep right. Roller. And so there's going to be a point at which someone will come and drag him back to his real exactly. duties. And... <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Whoever the love interest is is going to yeah. go back with them, and there's going to be all these terrible scenes of them being completely out of place and hating yeah. it. And, you know, she's like, Annie Oakley, and she wears yeah. Yeah. heels and, and yeah. I mean, you know, um, chaps and a bloody chaps. Steps. I was going to say, chaps, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, but don't make him enough. a prince and never mention the princely thing again. Yeah. That's what, yeah, people. That's that's yeah. not going to make readers. You have to hit the to deliver on them. You had to deliver the points on the tropes that people had an expectation for, but it's how you get there yeah. and, and around it yeah. and the emotion and the feeling and the dialogue and the setting, that's where you get the license. And mm. that's what you have, that what, it's what draws the reader in um, and wants them to carry on reading. I think you know, some people would them. hear that. They, they mm. kind of go, oh, I don't want to be like everyone else. I don't want to follow those tropes. I don't want to. But I don't want to follow the structure. And and I think some people look down on romance, for example, because they're like, oh, it's always the same. You know, they always lay it together. Or yeah. boring. And it's <laughs> yeah. like they don't actually, I mean, everything has structure. Every single yeah. book out there has structure. Absolutely. Even books that seem unstructured, that's structure, structure. that they are hmm. unstructured. You know, like that's, there are rule, people have been writing since the first cavemen wrote on the walls you know like telling mm -hmm. stories there's structure because that's how we understand and see things and we do it as a group like we see things that you know like it's not just me that loves enemies to lovers it's like millions of people out there love enemies to lovers and it's for a reason like we understand mm. and it meets a need that we have inside ourselves so you're not mm. you know and it, and the the license as Wendy said or the or the creativity or the imagination that you get to use is is filling in the gaps between that structure and around that yeah. structure and the padding. Like you get to make uh, yeah. a prince and you get to make him any way you like, but you kind of don't want to make him perfect because that's really boring. Mm. And you and you don't want to, like Sha was saying, you don't want to make him a prince and never mention it again because what's the point in him being a prince if it's mm. not part of the yeah. the story, you know? You want to read conflict. a book for the feels. You yeah. know, it's all good. You've got to give people what they want. And that's like, I've just finished a book and at the end of it, I was like, well, it didn't really amount to anything. You know, like 
there was not really any conflict. There was all how this. Many have we, how many you know, times can I just say, have we heard this from you, Wendy? Every, every book. Every, 60 yeah, books. Yeah. And... yeah, yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> no, no I'm just reading someone else's book. No, someone yeah. else's book that was, yeah. I don't, yeah. But you, oh, I see. I'm yeah, sorry. I just, I just, yeah, I was like, there was, there was, it was blah. It had everything that it was needed to be not blah. And it was blah. And they because there it. was, it oh. didn't make me laugh or cry or feel right. or get they didn't choked up in the chest, yeah. you know. Mm. And that those things are quite easy fixes to learn mm. how to write. Mm. Like yeah. we talk about, you don't have to be born a writer to be a writer. You can mm. learn to be a writer mm. and well, a very good it's a craft, good right? It's, it's like, a craft. It's, it's like a being craft. a doctor or a bricklayer or whatever you want to be. It's a learned skill. Mm. Um, mm. Learn it right. And the emotion is, is one of the big keys to me. Mm. And yeah. I think, and... and probably maybe the final craft tip would be to read the books the books that you love really analyze them you know mm. what is it break them it? down yeah re reread the parts that just made you go wow look yeah. at the dialogue that's a big mm. one for me like dialogue i remember when huge. i was first starting out and you're kind of like oh, i want the dialogue to be realistic well realistic dialogue is awful it's boring. Yeah. Like, mm. it yeah. is boring lots of ums and ahs and, and we went down oh, hello blah 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 on and we mm. don't get to the point you know whatever you want short snappy really fun yeah. cool dialogue Quirky, that yeah. that's, mm. is working hard for you like yeah. dialogue can say so much more than than even like you know how we people go um i'm i'm really unhappy she said sadly like yeah. you know like so yeah, yeah 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 she's all done said it. it like twice yeah. <laughs> like yeah. that is yeah. not a good thing to do you know like there's ways mm. to to put across mm. the information that mm. she's unhappy without it being um like that well without you know telling. just like yeah exactly saying something like why have you got that face someone says to yeah. you you know like yeah. what face yeah. you know like yeah. bom, bom, bom. Yeah. I'm fine. and we're away you know like yeah. I'm fine she's on that's, tone she's snapped. Not. Yeah, that's yeah, not no. to say that's not to say that dialogue can't be you know, like somebody telling somebody off and mm. the way like a paragraph is different uh, lengths of sentences. Dialogue can be like that. It can be mm. one word. It can be like, mm. you know, a, you know, a whole sentence or a few paragraphs. But as long as it's broken down to mean something and mm. it's not just a wafting of, uh, you know, an idea, but just like it really is about the emotion, I think, dialogue, yeah. isn't it? Absolutely, 100%. I honestly hundred percent believe that that it's emotion and it's character that carries mm. along the I story. Agree. I yeah, mean I you agree. do need yeah. things happening, the plot is important too, mm. but but if you mm. don't get the character, people character want to emotion. connect with the characters. Yeah. Yeah. And, and do that's it the worst quick. thing. That's do the worst quick. thing. Yeah. Do yeah. Quick. yeah, do it quick. But the worst thing is like when you don't connect to a character. Don't you yeah. hate that? Like when you're reading yeah. this person and I'm like, I don't actually really care yeah. what happens to this person. Yeah. It's like yeah. Death knell for a writer. Yeah, you, that, yeah. That's you've got to. You've yeah. just given all their backstory, but it meant nothing because yeah, exactly. you don't actually get a feel for that character, or yeah. you know how they're progressing through the story, or even you know how they've been affected by the backstory. Yeah. You know? yeah. Sasha Black gave us this um, this really awesome um, thing that she does with when she's helping new re writers learn things, and it was I think she put people on a beach. And I've used mm. it since, actually. Sorry, Sasha, I've stolen your thing. But with with young writers that I've worked with, and it's put different characters on a beach. So if you put an um, elderly lady on the beach, what with a with a walker and um, you know sensible shoes, and then you put a princess in her big massive dress and all beautifully dulled up and done, you know everything's perfect, and then you put a pirate on that beach. Each of those characters is going to react completely differently to that same yeah. setting. The setting hasn't changed. Yeah. Nothing yeah. different about that. And it's and so it's a matter of sitting down and going, well, what would the little old lady do? Well, she'd be yeah. probably a bit, a bit uncomfortable. Yeah. She's can't push her walker. She can't get anywhere. There's sand everywhere. It's whatever you know. And the pirate would be like digging for his tree. You know, you can all think up your own ideas of what those characters would do on the beach. But it's a really good way to kind of go, not just the person is unhappy but to actually go how would they interact yeah. and how would they mm -hmm. act within yeah. the setting that you've put and what them are they in feeling and with, what are yeah. they feeling without going yeah. he was sad you know yeah. like he was making mm -hmm. himself a, a cup of hot chocolate to make himself feel better or you know whatever like there's ways to show rather than having to tell he's a pirate he's having a, a jug of whiskey mate he's yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> he's half drunk they're both waiting out there for him he's got a peg yeah, leg he hates yeah. the beach but he's yeah. determined to dig that to find, hole to find that damn yeah. treasure whatever yeah. you know like 
you can mm. i think putting things. yourself in a position too is a good one you mm, know put yeah. it, for me it's like um putting myself into a position what would i be if that happened to me how would i mm. react to that what would mm. i do if i saw a yeah. man who I mm -hmm. was in love with 10 years ago and he knocked me flat on the ground, you know, like it would be, it's important that you put the emotion in, don't take it out, you know, mm -hmm. like, yeah, yeah. I think that's important. Get the scene written and if it's not right reading well, go back and redo it. And also just remember, if you're writing a scene with dialogue, watch your, your point of view for emotion mm. if it's not emotive enough change the point of view and then the emotion might come yeah. the person who is most invested in that scene is the one whose head you should be in yeah, yeah. because they're the one who are going to feel the most emotion you know in that yeah. moment um and they're going to be looking at the guy or the girl across there who's looking their stony face and said all the things that mm. that that person's done to them is going to yeah. be filtering through there regardless yeah. of whether you're doing girl boy girl boy chapters or yeah. scenes regardless yeah. of that mm. it's a really mm. important point really i think yeah, yeah. Mm. Mm. i've done that a lot if a scene hasn't worked i'm just like it's a rewrite, but ah, oh, gosh, it's so much better from the other point of view. Mm. And I like the, the idea of changing the setting as well. Like, mm, um, mm. I think it was Donald Mars or someone talked about, mm. um, you know, a scene in the middle of a storm or something yep. like that. Like, mm. like so that the setting itself becomes a character in the in mm. what you're writing. So that you know these mm. characters are trying to have a fight about whose mm. fault it was that they broke up. And yeah. it's and they're and they're not just in the kitchen. They're in, in a storm cellar mm. with about five other people, and there's this tornado raging outside, and they think they might yeah. die. And right. you know that kind of thing. It amps it mm. up so that you kind mm. of go, "That's mm. amazing." Rather than it being, mm. "Oh yeah, they're in the kitchen and they're <laughs> being a bit," you know? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah. For Very sure. good. Cool. Okay, mm -hmm. so your homework is to go and re-listen to our episode with Lisa Cron, who wrote Story Genius, and um, it's she's just amazing. Uh, and also the Sasha Black episode with us. Yeah, mm -hmm. and this book here is one I mentioned when Wendy put me on the spot. Oh, did we? I can't remember. We've talked about it recently anyway, and it's called Writing for Emotional Impact. I'd really love to get this guy on the podcast, actually. Maybe I'll email him and ask. What's it, well, Who wrote it? Um, Carl Inglesius. Oh, um, Ulio's yeah, younger Ulio's son. Um, <laughs> oh, can we not? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like this, that's dodgy to say that every time. Yeah, like, okay. All right, I won't Inglesius say it. Take it back. Take it back. Out there in the world. Um, yeah, sure. and it's Good amazing idea. Because it yeah. gives you practical tips on how to I do like emotion. the cover of that book, I'm just saying. It's an Post awesome cover. Mm. Very busy. Very busy. Mm. Mm. Are you being sarcastic now? No, I'm not. I, you can tell what it's about. Emotional impact. Yeah, 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 it's very mm -hmm. good. It's very good. I listened yeah. to it as I was gardening, and um, that was the first yeah. time. And then it's I very it. good. Yeah, again since. Anyway, sorry. So let's go. Oh, on track. Good. That is us. Nice. For Thanks for listening. Mini episode. Thanks for listening. We'll see you again next time. Bye. Get well. Bye. Bye. Bye.